Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a Friday Algorithm Show. Uh, in today's lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to implement a recursive algorithm to perform searching inside of a binary tree. So some of you guys might not have heard of some of these terms such as recursion or binary tree, but basically if you're trying to get a job out here in the software world as a software engineer, uh, you're gonna to have to go through interviews and inside of these interviews, uh, you have to do some whiteboard exercises, right? And a very typical exercise is to implement recursion through some kind of data structure such as a binary tree. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that with a very, very common example. All right, so starting out here with playgrounds loaded up, we have a very, very simple illustration uh, as to what one uh, sample tree looks like, starting with a root node of 10. So the very top node is commonly referred to as the root node, and uh, we have the left child of five and the right child of 14. So this is why it's called a binary tree. It has two children. And uh, for the children of the five, we have one on the left side, the children of the 14, we have 11 and 20 as the left and right children. So if your interviewer is having a good day, uh, what they will also provide you with in this example is the data structure called a node. And inside of node, we have the value, which is the 10 at the very top. And the left child is the five node. And then the right child is this 14 node right here. So. We also have this constructor guy right here, just because we are in Swift and we need to construct a node like this. So basically, this class right here, this node data structure, is able to capture this entire tree that we have uh, inside of this common block. And we can construct this entire tree just by using left nodes and right nodes for the root node of 10, and then we just cascade downwards. So that's how that works, right? And then at the very end of this, kind of brief intro that the interviewer will give you, uh, they will finally ask you to implement a search function to search for some kind of value inside of this tree. And if it exists in this tree, return true, otherwise just return false. So that's how this interview works. And if we have time left over in today's video, I want to kind of tell you guys what the point of all this is. Uh, basically, it has to do with efficiency, is kind of my takeaway from this example. And so, Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in order to implement this search function, we really have to understand a little bit further what this node class will do for us. So I'm going to walk through how to construct this tree using a root node uh, starting at line 25. So how do I construct this tree using node? Basically, I want to start with the 10 node. I'm gonna say let 10 root node equals some kind of node. And here the value will be 10. The left child will be this five guy right here, but I don't have it yet. So uh, I'm going to construct it right on line 25. Let, let's say five node equals node right here with the value of five. And the left child is this one left child right there. And I don't have that either. So let's say let one node equals node of value of one. Left child is nil, right child is nil because the one doesn't really have any children. So let's take this one node, put it on the left side of that five node, and then the right will be nil because there is no children on the right side. And so we have the five node now, right? So good stuff. Let's put it inside of the 10 root nodes left branch. So commonly referred to uh, right here is this branch naming convention. So we have root node and then we have the left branch. And to construct the right branch, see your right branch, we will construct this 14 node right here, which we'll use later for this right child. So 14 looks like this. Uh, let's 14 node equals node like that. And the value will be 14. Left child will be this left child or this 11 child. Let's uh, 11 node equals no, with the value of 11, nil for left and nil for right. And uh, let's take this 11 node and put it as the left. And then finally, let's just construct this 20 node. So 20 node equals node of value of, let's see, value of, uh, let's see, 20 left child of nil and then right child of also nil. Finally, we can pass in the 20 node just like that. So 14 node goes on the right side of the 10 root node, 
giving us this entire tree right here. So that's how you would construct it. And this is a very good example to go through to further understand how to use this node class to construct a tree. All right. Moving on, we can now start to implement what this search uh, algorithm needs to look like. So a good idea is to kind of make a sample call with a known and a search value. And the node looks like this, uh, 10 root node, which was constructed up here. And the search value needs to be something like 10. So assuming that we are searching through this tree right here that we're, uh, we conveniently constructed right here, we need to return a value of true because 10 is actually in this tree, but the algorithm is just returning a false. So to implement some logic in here, we'll say if node.value is equal equal to 10, we'll just return the uh, value of true, right? So that's a 10 right there. So to replace the 10, we will use the search value. And now the function returns uh, true for the search value of 10. If we put in five, what's going to happen in this use case? Well, it says return false, but we know this tree has the value of five, so it should actually return true. So to make this a little bit easier for you guys to see, let me just copy that tree and paste it inside of this line right there. So it gives us a good visualization as to what the tree looks like. So we're searching for the value of five and now we're returning false. So we need to augment the search algorithm to search through the left and the right children. So I'll say else, let's see else what happens. So basically if the value is not equal to the search value, we'll return the search of something right here. So this is the actual recursion call. So recursion is basically just Another name for calling the same method that you're already in with perhaps different parameters. In this case, we are going to uh, call the recursion with the same search value. Uh, the left or the node right here will be the node's left child. Left child right there. And uh, let's get rid of that line. So calling this recursion on itself with this search method, we see that we return a value of true now. So if we search for the value of one instead of the five, this is also going to return true, okay? So the problem is that if we search for the value of zero, the program actually crashes because it is continually searching for the left child of nil and is basically continually uh, looping through itself. So that's the, uh, the infinite loop that we're running into. Uh, to solve for this infinite loop, we have to introduce a base case for this recursion. And it's very simple. If you check for if the node is nil, we just return the value of false. So if the node is false, it's going to just instantly stop. And or if the node is nil, it's going to stop instantly, giving us a return value of false. So that's kind of how that works. And uh, let's see if the program will kind of execute a interrupt on itself to get rid of the infinite loop. All right, so that's kind of how that works. If I search for the value of zero again, it returns false, which is exactly what I would expect from this algorithm. So be very careful about this infinite loop right there. And uh, now I want to search through the right side of the tree. So for example, if I search for 14, which is right there, uh, this should return a value of true, right? Because uh, 14 is on the right side of this tree. So to fix this, I will introduce an or right here at the very end of the uh, search recursive call, and we'll search for the node of nodes right child and the search value of 14. No, that's not what I need. I need the search value parameter from the actual call. So changing that, uh, we will get a value of true if we search for 14. If we search for 11, we will go to the right and then we will go to the left, which also gives us true. If we search for the value of 20, we'll go to the right first and then go to the right again on the second recursive call. And then we also get the value of true. So that's kind of how this works right here. Uh, this line right here, we can remove because it will never be executed uh, because return actually happens in this else case of the if block. So, Taking a look at this, you can see how many times it executes this search, and it says five times. So sometimes, I think this five is actually not correct. 
I think it only searches through this uh, call roughly four times is my understanding of this search algorithm. So it's not always five. If you search for the value of, let's say, 14, I believe you get three right here. So there is a count as to how many times you're looping through the search. So that is basically the implementation of this algorithm right here. And there's some things that we can fix, but let me first go through uh, question number four. So basically, what is the point of all this, right? And we have to talk about, let's see, let's talk about efficiency of this type of searching inside of this uh, tree right here. And uh, you can see that if you are searching through this tree and you're just trying to find the value of five right here, how many times do you have to search through this uh, search algorithm? Basically, you have to go through it roughly two times. So you go through the 10, you go to the left, and then you find the five and you exit outside of the search recursive call. So you execute this method two times, which is a value of just two. And so basically, I want to go through the same example, but if we don't use this tree structure and instead use an array, let's see how, how the efficiency is impacted. So this example will say, let list equals uh, the same list, but sorted. So 1, 5, 10, 11, 14, and 20. So this is the same type of list that is represented by this tree right here. It's just not in a tree structure. So 1, 5, 10, 11, 14, and 20. If we're trying to search for five, right, we also execute a, a loop through this uh, array probably two times. Uh, every time we go through the, this iteration of this loop, we just test for if the value is uh, the value of five. So basically the, the searching algorithm looks like this. So let index equals list dot index right here. And this will say uh, this block right here, dollar sign equal equal to five perhaps. And so it goes through it three times. I think it's really going through this uh, index search two times. I don't know. I don't really understand why it's saying three. And uh, if we search for the value of 20 in this use case, how many times does it go through this iteration? So seven or six times. And uh, if you look at this algorithm right here, this searching algorithm, uh, if you try to search for the value of 20, the uh, playgrounds will tell you that it goes through the search five times or roughly four times. So this means that this search right here is actually a little bit faster compared to the index search of uh, looping through this entire array. And that's the point of this entire algorithm. Uh, if you're trying to search through a data structure, you want to perform that search as fast as you can. Uh, if it's a little bit slower, then that means that the computer kind of goes through the uh, the number crunching just a little bit longer to perform the entire algorithm. Now, one thing that you can improve about this searching is to kind of take into consideration how this tree is structured. So looking at this tree right here, one thing that I haven't really mentioned is that if the tree is set up so that everything on the left side is lesser than the parent node and everything on the right side is greater than the parent node, well, you can kind of improve this algorithm just a little bit, which is to introduce a, another uh, case right here, another case check. So I'm gonna say if the node right here, if the search value is not the node's value, I'm gonna check if it's lesser than uh, the node's value first and then search on the left side. So in other words, I'm gonna say if uh, search value is less than, lesser than node's value like so. Uh, so it's going to give me this error right here. Let me fix that by introducing a bang unwrap operator. And that's going to give me the, uh, the non-optional int value right there. And if I'm inside of this uh, else case, I'm just going to return search of, let's see, nodes left child, because I know that the value exists on the left branch. And the search value will just be search value like so. And I'm going to fix this by saying, uh, let me just search through the right node. Let me just type it out, I guess. Search right here. And the node's uh, right child. And then the same search value as above. So let me just get rid of that line and perhaps that last brace right there. And let me get the spacing correct. So 
with this improvement of our algorithm, you notice that searching for the value of 20 now executes only two times right here. So it's going to the right side, starting from the 10, it's going to the 14, and then going to the 20, which is only two iterations of our search algorithm. Uh, if you try to search for the value of five, it's going to execute this thing probably once or twice, uh, basically going to the 10 and then finding the five. And if you're trying to search for a value that doesn't exist inside of this tree, for example, the value of zero, let's see how many times it executes. So it says three, right? So it starts with the 10, it goes to the five, goes to the one, and then the one doesn't have any children. And uh, this means we're going to hit line 46, returning us the false. In this case, if you're trying to search for, let's say, the value of, I don't know, maybe 30, perhaps, it's going to go through this entire loop uh, n times, which gives us 7. If you search for the value of 30 in this case, it goes through the loop 3 times again because it just goes to the right side. And uh, you can see how the, effic the efficiency of this search, this recursive search, is a lot better than the, uh, the index search that we have from Swift. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's recursive search video. Uh, I think recursion is a lot of fun once you kind of understand how it works. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more algorithm videos like this. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye, guys.